This is Ezequiel Garcia here for GuffAtStuff.net. We got a big one here. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to introduce yourselves real quick? Whoever goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jax from Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, Master Daniel Pacina, uh, original Mortal Kombat. All right, and uh, let me just say real quick, thank you so much for doing this interview. And uh, let me just start off by asking, um, what, how's, how's, how do you like Arizona so far? Beautiful. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it hot, so I, I like it. People are friendly. Uh, we get to hang out, so it's awesome here. Right. Yeah, it's a great, great state. I might even move here. I don't know. If I can convince my wife, I love the heat, though. Heat doesn't bother me. Could be a little cooler, but <laughs> other, otherwise it's great. Yeah. Definitely not Chicago. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so uh, let's start off by asking, um, so how did you guys end up uh, being part of Mortal Kombat? Uh, starting with uh, Daniel. Um, actually, uh, my friend uh, John Tobias, like uh, uh, I knew John Tobias before Mortal Kombat. We used to play Dungeons and Dragons together. So one day he called me up and said, "Hey, can you help me pitch a project to my boss? I want to do a fighting game." And so uh, myself, my brother Carlos, and Rich, uh, we got together and we went to uh, John's work, and he filmed us doing moves and stuff like that. And he had some drawings and an idea of uh, a little bit of an idea of a game. And so then he approached his boss, who was Ed Boone, about the project. All right, and uh, what about you, Chris? I was in Mortal Kombat 2, so after Mortal Kombat 1 became a huge success, they needed more characters, and so Daniel had me uh, do things in front of Ed Boone and John Tobias, and they liked it, so they asked me to play Shang Tsung. Oh, uh, well, we were all working at a Lakeshore Athletic Club, and when Danny came in with that first game, and uh, they ran up to me and said, he wants to come try it out. And uh, I was like, oh, man, this is great. And they said, how did you like it? I said, oh, the kids will love it. I said, yeah, there wasn't problem, though. There's never any brothers in the game. <laughs> of course, you know, I was just joking. I was like, hey, I mean, I know we got some brothers that play the game. And uh, a couple weeks later, they came back with a sketch of Jax, and, uh, and I said, damn, man, that dude is ripped. They said, that can be you. I said, really? Yeah. I said, do I get paid? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So, but it's been a, it's been fun and it's it's a, been a lovely thing to do. So, there were two brothers in the game, Daniel and Carlos Pacina. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to ask. Uh, I and I did approach them because of uh, pure athletic ability. I've actually watched them move and do stuff, and I'm like, man, they look. Uh, during the project, our prim primary concern, or at least my primary concern, was to making sure the characters look like they can fight. Because you can always put somebody in front of the camera, and they can do martial art moves, but right away you're like, oh, they can't really, really fight. So uh, when I asked these guys to, hey, uh, John and Ed, take a look at these guys, because, man, they, they can move really good. And uh, funny you should mention that because there are a few other examples of arcade games using digitized actors. I believe it was a uh, Pit Fighter that came out first. Yeah. Uh, came out in 1990. And uh, what is the process? Uh, you know, like when you guys come into work at Midway. Um, hi, this yeah. is a. Uh, <laughs> hi guys. Hi guys. I'm Leah Montalongo. Most of you probably know me as playing Sindel. I was also featured as Serena in Sub Zero Mythologies, and I did model for Tanya in E3 events. How you doing? Thank you so much for being here. And uh, real quick, um, so like, what was it like going to Midway every day, you know, uh, getting ready to, you know, record and do all sorts of fun stuff for uh, these games? I mean, uh, like, what, on average, like, how long did you guys, you know, record and do all sorts of moves and stuff? Well, uh, it was fun. I mean, you drive up. I mean, our first studio really was like a, a utility closet. We had green paint on the wall, duct tape on the floor. This box that was supposed to be, I guess, stairs or something. And uh, but when we went in there, uh, I mean, we were like family, like brothers and sisters. You know, we just had fun. You know, they say, "Do this move. Can you do this?" You know, and sure. You know, we just kept going. I mean, as far as a typical day, how long? I don't know. We had so much fun. I didn't count how many hours. I only remember one when we did Mortal Kombat three, and they did my arms metal. That was the only time I counted that it took six hours because. The makeup artist forgot how big my arms were, and <laughs> he ran out of paint, and I had to wait for him to go get it and come back. <laughs> That's the only time I remember how long. But otherwise, going in, it was it was great. You know, I mean, you wouldn't even think it was a studio like in today's time. It was it's like people just come in off the street. Mine was easy. One one morning, four hours, and that included 
drawing a, John Tobias drawing a goatee on me because I couldn't I couldn't grow my own, and <laughs> and that included my flimsy costume that Midway provided for me coming off all the time while I was filming. So in spite of all that, I finished everything in one morning. Mine was a little bit more. I had to go in for costume makeup and fitting. And then once it was made, I had to go back in to make sure it fit. And then uh, putting the wig on for Sindel, that took a long period of time. And I remember um, make a niche. Yeah. yeah, helping me do the makeup, and that was for Sindel. Um, going back time and time again to film Serena, which was a lot of fun. And then the E3 events, again, more fitting for the costuming. Couldn't keep my thigh highs up because my quads were a little too muscular at the time, so they kept rolling down. So that was, you know, every take in between, I had to pull them up. But other than that, it was a lot of fun. It was time well spent. Yeah, actually, mine was pretty torturous. <laughs> yeah, being the, uh, uh, actually, I got to, uh, my first shooting was three days, eight hours a day, and they were, put me in front of a camera, and nobody knew what they were doing, so they, John was like, okay, we need a punch, and then I would be like, okay, what kind of punch, and then was like, how many punches do you know, and then, since I have an extensive martial art background, instructor at that time, I was like, well, there's a punch like this, there's a punch like this, punch like this, you could do an eye poke, you could do this, will the camera pick up this, will the camera pick up this, and John was like, I don't know, let's just start shooting everything possible. <laughs> so for three days, eight hours a day, I just stood in front of a camera and did every conceivable punch and kick combination, and uh, later on we learned that we couldn't actually use that footage for the game because when we were doing it, the camera was there. So if I threw a kick and then got and then went over here, I was actually bigger on camera than than before. So we were we uh, they took six weeks to look at that, and they were like, "Okay, Daniel, this is what we learned. Now you now we're really going to film. What do you think?" And then they would from there, I got to pick out what moves would actually work for the game. Yeah, it was extensive. And uh, were there any like injuries or anything like that? Like any sort of incidents that occurred that you can at least remember or anything like that? Injuries? Yeah, like any. No, the only only injury was to the first costume they gave me. Right. <laughs> and they told me to jump up and do a kick, and I said, I don't think this is going to work. And when <laughs> I did, the whole middle bottom part of my ass was showing. <laughs> But the injury was to the suit, not me. Right. Th that's why Jax wears the tights now. Right. <laughs> when he kept doing the split punch, he got he kept getting too close to me, so I, <laughs> I almost got hit, but no. <laughs> no, no injuries. No injuries. I think just the biggest challenge was carrying the wig. So when I was doing the, the drop falls on the um, gymnastics thick mat, the first thing that would go back was the 30-pound wig. Uh, I, I did have a little headache the next day, but I survived. <laughs> yeah, uh, as far as us, there was really no injuries. And again, uh, just costume stuff because uh, for the first game, uh, we didn't really have a budget. So it was stuff out of our closet or like for Scorpion, when I did Scorpion, it was actually to save money, we got a child's ninja suit. So right away when I threw a kick, I ripped that. And then we had, we, then we, took uh, safety pins and we put it together, but there wasn't enough safety pins, so then we used straight pins, and uh, that was, I was sticking me, swearing, not having a good time with the uh, ninjas. But besides that, nobody ever really got hurt. Yeah. Right. And uh, obviously, uh, since uh, Mortal Kombat 4, they made the transition to using uh, 3D models and all sorts of uh, uh, advancements, you know, to go along with uh, how video games have been evolving, and uh, I just got to ask real quick, what have you guys have been doing since uh, Mortal Kombat uh, 3? Well, I am uh, went finished school, and uh, I got my, uh, my bachelor's in computer information and uh, computer networking, and uh, I'm a master trainer for personal fitness and a certified nutritionist, so that's what I've been doing. I was actually in residency when I filmed for Shang Tsung. And so, since then, I've had a very busy career in uh, family medicine. Well, I've been busy. Um, I went on to compete in several fitness competitions and found the fitness arena, just like John here, and um, 
continued on as a personal trainer. I'm currently a group fitness instructor at Equinox and I'm a mom. Yeah, I wasted my college education and I am a martial art instructor. So I teach martial arts and just hang out with those guys. My students actually do the mocap uh, work for the games now. And also my brother who is, uh, works for NetherRealm, he works on the games and I'm here right now and he's back at my school teaching right now. So he allows me to come, but yeah, thank you. And uh, have you guys been in contact with Midway uh, ever since, or NetherRealm now? Uh, you know, just on occasion, at least once in a while? Yeah, like said, you know, because my brother still works there. He's the only one who's worked from the original concept, uh, the original original concept, not when management took over. But he is the only one who worked on the original concept uh, all, all the way to present. The only one. Yeah. All right, and uh, Daniel, can I ask you something real quick uh, before I let you guys go? Seven. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, seriously. Um, can I ask you real quick something about uh, some uh, video game in 1994 that was released known as uh, Bloodstorm? Sure. Um, if you guys don't know, um, he was featured on a poster for Bloodstorm. I don't for the life of me remember uh, who made the game. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, Bloodstorm actually, uh, there was a gentleman, I forget his name. Uh, ask Carlos. Carlos always remembers his name. So does Tobias. But anyway, uh, we used to have a background artist who uh, did the backgrounds for Mortal Kombat 2, and he got a new job at uh, Strata Studio as the head. He was uh, one of the minor artists, but then he was promoted to head artist at Strata. So he contacted John and Ed and asked John and Ed to ask me if I would do him a favor and come out and uh, do, do some stuff for the game. So everybody thinks that I, I, like I went against their, I went, went against Midway when actually you know, John and Ed hooked up the, the gig for me. They made sure I got paid and they were in on, on the whole action. But any publicity is good publicity. So it brought up this question here, so I'm happy to answer that question. He was part of that, uh, that game is part of the MK family. So, and I got paid. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, well, these to say, this, is a, this was a huge uh, monkey off my chest. I was, I'm not gonna lie, a little nervous about doing this interview because I have played pretty much every single Mortal Kombat game. Uh, including mythologies, as he mentioned earlier. Um, and I just want to thank you so, so much for being cool enough to do this interview. Seriously, thank you so much. Um, Get over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank Drop you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is Zico Garcia for guffastuff.net, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>